Roy Port Wednesday. Yes. We'll have references at the end. First, we'll talk a little football. After dominating the Buccaneers on Monday night, Dak Prescott told reporters the game was a chance for him to just dial back in after he struggled against the Commanders in Week 18. Name the player who needs to be the most dialed in for their divisional round matchup this weekend, Peter. This can go a lot of places. Brett Maher, you got to get there. Yeah. <laughs> like, we need you there. Like, this can't, you can't miss four extra points in a game. I think Jerry Jones and Mike McCarthy and Will McClay and the rest of the folks up there in Dallas have shown a lot of grace over the last 24 hours. It seems like Maher is still on the team, still on the roster. They won the game. This was inexplicable. Had they lost the game, this is one of the all-time goats in Cowboys history. Um, they won, though, and Brett Maher's still on the roster, but what a weird oddity that was. He's missed his, he missed five extra points in a row going back to Week 18 against the Commanders in the first four against Dallas. Brett Maher, get it together, man. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not a kicker. None of us at the table are. Jamie's married to an ex-former college kicker. Um, Hey, Brett Mark, got to dial man. in. Got to dial in? Yeah, I got nothing for him. I can't kick an extra point. And I'm going to go positive. I'm going to say Patty Mahomes. Okay. Not because he needs to prove anything. I just miss him. We didn't get a chance <laughs> to watch him play this week. I want to just see Patrick Mahomes out there making some incredible plays like you see right here, spinning, throwing the ball up in the air. We saw it all season. They earned their bye week, some would say, however you they earned it. figure it all out. But they didn't play this past week, and I just miss watching Patrick Mahomes. So I can't wait to see him in the divisional and see what he has dialed up for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I want to see more plays like this right here. Get it done, Patty. All right, here comes uh, the shout-out from Patrick's mom saying it's Patrick uh, since mm. you called him Patty. Be ready for that. You warned. Listen, I'm going to say Jalen Hurts. All right, listen, Eagles fans, I, you should be excited about your team and what you guys accomplished this season. I mean, there was a point in time we were talking about they're the best team in football. Jalen Hurts is the MVP. And, Peter, you brought up earlier on in the show about uh, it's been a long time. It's 38 days. 38 days since they had that slobber knocker against the Giants. Well, guess what? That was also the last game that Jalen Hurts threw a touchdown pass in. Mm. That's how long it's been. Now, look, he was hurt, no doubt about it. Hurts the shoulder against Chicago. Missed time, so that's uh, the big part of it. But even the Week 18 game, he just didn't look like himself. And, mm -hmm. and so I think for him, he's got to be dialed in, got it locked in. There's nothing worse than, you know, starting out a, a game at home like that and just having a couple of clunkers, skip a rock, throw, throw a ball high a little bit. Yeah. He's got to be dialed in right from the get-go. Totally. Those are good answers. I love all your answers. I'm going to go uh, Josh Allen. Strange, uh, I'm not going to say behavior because, frankly, I, I love his fire and his passion, but, like, he got a little tuned up with Christian Wilkins last weekend against Dolphins. He threw two picks. He was annoyed about that. I think he's got to dial it in. This is going to be a heavy game. It's at home against the Bengals. Again, the emotional weight on this team, I don't think you can talk about it enough. And this is the guy who's at the forefront of this team. So I don't think he's not dialed in. I just think he needs to, not that I don't think he won't be, but, like, really just take it a notch and just make sure it's all on lockdown there. Josh Allen. All right. Cowboys Niners divisional round game is the hottest matchup this weekend with fans paying at least 570 bucks just to get a ticket. The historic playoff matchup that you would pay the most money to see live would be you get to put yourself back in time, yeah. throw some cash down on the table, Ooh. get your way in. Peter, where are you going? Can we go 33 years ago? Sure. Please do. Can we go 33 years ago? Um, let me set the scene for you. Candlestick Park. 49ers, Giants, two best teams in all of football. 13-12, 49ers are leading, trying to run out the clock. Lawrence Taylor says, I've got some things in mind. Take a listen to the call and watch the play. 13-12, Niners, fourth quarter, two minutes left. Lawrence Taylor, do your thing. First and 10. Ring, hit behind the line of scrimmage, and the Giants have the ball. Lawrence Taylor out of the pack. You knew that the Giants were going for it, so who should get it? Lawrence Taylor. We have many to win for Tampa Bay, baby. Many <laughs> Leonard Marshall, we're a minute away from Tampa Bay. He would, of course, knock Joe Montana. Giants win 15-12. to 12. Lawrence Taylor in San Francisco in Candlestick, and then they would go on to win the Super Bowl. A very Giants-friendly show this morning. That Seriously? one got me the Love chills it. with Summerall on the call. Jason, what do you got? Sean Howard just brought the Giants. Now we're all going there. <laughs> uh, I'm going the Big Ben tackle. Back in 2005, yes. the divisional round. I'm a senior in high school, and I'm watching this game. And the Steelers kind of dominated the Colts throughout that game. And then next thing you know, 
know Jerome Bettis is going in to put the game away and score. Fumbles it. Gary Brackett makes a huge tackle. Nick Harper picks the ball up, and Big Ben saves the day. And then you fast forward, I get into the NFL. There were so many guys on this field that impacted my career. Nick Harper was the starting cornerback in front of me when I first got to Tennessee. Chris Holt was a mentor for me. David Thornton. All of those guys, Deshae Townsend was a coach for me at one point. All of those guys were playing in that game. Crazy to be watching it in high school and fast forward, look around. I'm like, man, I'm in the same locker room with guys I was watching and admiring back in high school. Really cool. That is good. I, I, lo I love the Big Ben. Very invested. And anytime you can bring up Big Ben, it's, it's, it's a good time. It was. Listen, I'm going I'm to peel back the, the, the clock as well, Shregs, like you did. And about... Eight days ago, <laughs> we celebrated the 43rd anniversary of this game. It's not even a Super Bowl, but when you have an anniversary, you know it's a big game. 1981 NFC Championship game, 49ers, Cowboys. We're going back to Candlestick where you just were, Peter. Yep. And this game obviously is known for that play right there, the catch to Dwight Clark in the back of the end zone. The 49ers were down in this game. Right, this was a, a, a game-winning drive right here. They had to come back and take the lead. And Montana's a sprint right option. And his first option, the fullback, actually trips and slips and goes down. That's why he found Dwight Clark and looked for a second read. So uh, I, I would love to have been at this game. We've all seen this, that throw, that play. But the backstory with that is the 49ers had lost twice in that same NFC Championship game to the Cowboys a decade earlier. So there, this had been brewing for a long time. So that game was paramount on, on so many levels. Um, I also bring that up because I have a personal connection with Dwight Clark. So mm. uh, rest his soul. We lost him a few years ago to ALS. Uh, but he was with the Cleveland Browns when I was there. Mm. Great man. Loved being around him, him and his family. Uh, great people. So I would have loved to be there, been there to see that in person. I like these memory lanes. I'm not going to write my answer. Peter, you want to help me out? Throw this just like right here. Oh, jeez. Just oh, right here. Like, I do it again. You want the helmet catch? That's right. my, I want the helmet oh, catch. That counts as a playoff game, oh, right? There. Super Sean Bowl was the 42. All right. was the I know he was. That's why. It's Giants Give, friendly. Why don't he helmet snap it to me and I throw it to you? Okay, him. great. Here, let's try again. That's the most scary. Snap it to, snap it to Treggs. Okay. Jason, try to catch it. No. <laughs> okay, you ready? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, there it is. Look at that. She called with both hands. Right. I did. You know what? Let's not. And then there was whatever. And it turns into a Saturday Night Live spoof. Then you know it's a great game. I kind of wish I was there. It was like the onset of Twitter. But if you were in the stadium, I, I can't believe the, the puzzle that went down on people's. And the people were pissed. People were happy. People were thrilled. I just want to be in a moment like that where, like, the utter confusion on a play like that and then the celebration and the Giants win and just the upset. Oh, so great. I don't even want to write it down. Jamie, do, do you know where that Super Bowl was played? Uh, Glendale. Do you know where the Super Bowl this year is played? Uh, Breach. Glendale. Breach. Hmm. The connective tissue, Peter. <laughs> Listen, we had a third question for Whiteboard, but Kyle's not here, and so we don't have to do it because it was television and movie related. <laughs> Coming up, which team impressed us the most on Super Bowl for a wild card weekend? We're going to break out the hats. No cap is on the way.